This is Lois Waverly for Women Today and Yesterday. In a minute, we're going to be seeing um, the taping that was done at the Women's Center at Ohio University um, last week. That would have been a week ago yesterday, actually. It was taped by my colleague, uh, Alex Ross, and uh, uh, that material will follow these immediate uh, introductory remarks. The um, subject really is a time 40 years ago in 1977 when there were 56 territorial and state meetings about women for International Women's Year um, that followed the Mexico City first International Women's meeting that was held uh, in 1975. And I was quite involved with in 1976 and especially in 1977 with the uh, national women's meetings held in this country, especially, of course, in our own state of Ohio. My name is Dr. Murray. I'm the director of the Women's Center here at Ohio University, and it is a joy, an honor, a privilege, a pleasure to be able to introduce Lois, who is doing our talk today on the meetings that occurred across the United States um, in 1977, which is a 40-year anniversary this year. She is everywhere, and you will frequently see her picture in the Athens News because she is incredibly active. She also has received outstanding feminist award from, from the Athens Her Story Celebration. She also received um, the Woman of Achievement by the Black Diamond Girl Scout I Council. She's the recipient of the Unsung Unitarian Universalist Award by the Ohio Medville District Unitarian mm -hmm. Universalist Association, a How-To Award from the Educational Press Association of America, a Donna Chen Women's Equity Award from Ohio University, and a Community Service Award from the Athens County Community Services Council. I can say on behalf of the Women's Center that we would not be nearly um, as wonderful, active, or in existence without the wonderful work of Lois Bailey. And so with that, I hope you get just a little bit of taste of what it is that you are in for. Well, this uh, Women Today and Yesterday, I should mention especially right at the beginning because it's my a weekly program on Channel 9, Time Warner Cable now known as Spectrum. I've been doing that for 10 years. I'm always looking for fresh people, women, that I can interview because I only talk with women on Women Today and Yesterday program. That's uh, the Community Access Channel line uh, at 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and at 3 p.m. on Sunday and Saturday. Unfortunately, it's only in Athens and slightly to the west and slightly to the east, so a lot of the folks that I know can't receive it um, live. However, there's a way of going on the internet and, and to getting it. I try to have a different people each week, but right now I have a wonderful program with Debbie Phillips, who is our former representative in the state legislature. She was uh, term limited out. She was uh, our representative for eight years, and that was the tops. So she's on my current program. Highlighting the IWY 1977 meetings, Divided We Stand, the battle over women's rights and family values that polarized American politics. That book has just been published, I mean, hot off the press. It was done in February, and it is now receiving a great deal of attention. There have been several book reviews of it. Her major idea, which is an important one, is this, I'm a liberal woman, okay? I proudly uh, claim that. But there are many women who are not, quote, liberal women. They feel that certain family values are more important, such as those who oppose choice on abortion. They are anti-choice, many of them. Um, so there are women's rights on the one hand, 
rights of families and women to make sure that their families are the right size for them. Those who feel that the unborn is uh, as fully human as the woman, in fact, more important because if the woman is pregnant, then she should have that infant. Divided we stand. And I want to point out, this is a great book cover. And up at the top, you'll notice there are a bunch of women in all in blue t-shirts with the women's bird, with the quality sign in the tail feathers, and the women's circle with the cross underneath it, which is the feminist women's way of identifying women. Those people are Bella Abzug in the hat. She always wore hats. The chairman of the National Women's Meeting held in November 1977. And next to her there are three young women and they got their arms up. They are holding a torch. That torch was sent from Seneca Falls, New York. It was on the road for like a month or so. Um, to open the women's meeting in 1977 in Houston. You notice there's a Latina woman in the center. There's a white woman with uh, yellow hair. <laughs> and uh, then we have a black woman on the other side. They took the torch the last mile into Houston. I want to point out the uh, white woman, uh, just because the way things are, uh, she was featured on the Time cover uh, following the National Women's Meeting. She is living, I believe, still in Ohio. Her name is Peggy Coconut, and she lives in Columbus, or at least she was on her way to Columbus when she met Dr. Katherine Jellison. Does everyone here know Dr. Katherine Jellison? She's the chairman of the history department. Catherine recognized her you know, and told her there was a, a book with her picture in it in one of the women's studies books, which is very popular. And on the far side, that's Betty Friedan. And of course, she wrote the, the, in the 1960s that really brought women to attention. What is it about women and what are the problems that women have? And you see a red picture. And there are a lot of signs, and they are all saying, stop ERA, stop the Equal Rights Amendment. The woman holding her hand up there is Phyllis Schlafly, the best known of the uh, leaders of the mostly anti-women, feminist type women. She only passed away last year. So it's 40 years since the National Women's Meeting was held in, in Houston. It really points out the differences. Now, I'm going to elaborate mostly on the, the liberal side because that's my side. I'm uh, famous or infamous as the case may be for wearing t-shirts. And this t-shirt says Ohio Women's Equality Day. Equality Day, as you probably know, is the 26th of August, which is the anniversary of the passage of women's vote in 1920. And we are now at year 97. In 2020, we'll be celebrating the centennial of the women's right to vote. These are the book reviews that I mentioned earlier. That's the one from USA Today. The other one is from the New York Times Magazine, and it shows the two iconic women from 1977 and still today. The woman with the long hair is Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem is an Ohio woman. She was born here. Her grandmother held office in the city of Toledo and Gloria Steinem was born in Toledo. The other picture is a picture, again, of Phyllis Schlafly, background to the International Women's Year. The Equal Rights Amendment had been first proposed in 1923 by Alice Paul of the Women's Party. The first time it ever got out of committee was 1971. Finally got out of committee, passed quickly the Equal Rights Amendment. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. That's a total thing. 
23 words, the Equal Rights Amendment, which uh, supposedly expired in 1982. It went to quickly to the states and was soon passed by 35 states. Ohio was the 33rd state on February 7th, 1974. Only two more states ratified, and no states ratified during the national women's meetings and, uh, that were, and the state meetings, state and territorial meetings that were held in 1977. Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion under certain conditions. That was in 1973. 1971, President Nixon was still with us. So when Title IX came out and when Roe versus Wade passed, he was still president. But of course, in 1974, he resigned because of the Watergate scandal. Mexico City was in 1975, which was the 30th anniversary of the United Nations formed in 1945, and that was the first International Women's Year, 1975, and it started a decade of women. Women's meetings were held in Mexico City. There was a women's meeting in Denmark in 1980, and the final one was in Kenya in 1985. And then, of course, uh, that was the end of the decade of women, but there was one more big international women's meeting, which was in Beijing in 1995. In this, the uh, Mexico City meeting, the whole idea was real discussions about women, women's rights, women's problems, women's possibility. These meetings were supposed to be held and they were approved in 1975, at the end of 1975, by the U.S. Congress. In the spring of 1976, they got down to real cases, like they're going to have to have a little money to put these things on. 56 meetings in every state and U.S. territory. I mean, they're going to have to rent space in order to have these meetings. So they need some money. And that's where the fight really began, was in the spring of 1976, and as it happened, our congressman was Clarence E. Miller of Lancaster. He had been congressman already for 10 years, and he was the congressman uh, for this area until uh, 1992. Congressman Miller led the fight against federal funding of these 56 state and regional international women's year meetings. Why do I say that? He was on the Appropriations Committee, and he was always a very firm, fiscal, conservative person. Well, Ann Kitts Miller, who was the uh, chair of the Eagle Forum in Ohio, which is a conservative women's group, lived in Lancaster, and she had his ear and so on. And he got a lot of mail from the Eagle Forum people. So he led this fight, and when it didn't go through, he, the amount of money they were talking about was $5 million for 56 meetings. He tried to get rid of all the money, but it didn't uh, work out. But it was very close. It was really very interesting. The wording was put in there by Mr. Miller that no legislation or constitutional amendment could be promoted by these women's meetings. Well, if you can't talk about legislation at all, it might help women out, what are you going to do? Actually, the wording was dropped finally, luckily. We didn't know about that. In fact, many people in Athens thought that Clarence Miller never took too much of a forward stand on, on anything. We didn't know. <laughs> And it was actually the AAUW, American Association of University Women. At the time, I was the local person who looks after women's laws and things like that for the AAUW branch locally. And the National AAUW informed me that Clarence Miller was leading the battle. <laughs> Did you know that it's your congressman who's doing this? No, good grief. Women in Athens responded with letters to Miller, you know, opposing this, and letters to the editor, the letter that we sent to the editor in Athens locally. That would have been in May 
of 1976, because that's when they were talking about actually having these meetings, and they didn't get around to having them until 1977, partly because in 1976 there was a very big uh, concern or interest in something. Anyone want to guess what it was? Bicentennial. There was going to be an election, of course, but that was the bicentennial of the Declaration of U U.S. Independence in 1776. And we'd had a big run-up to that. 1971, they started talking about things. A National Convention of the League of Women Voters in May of 1976. And I contacted Mildred Marcy of the U.S. State Department. The State Department was in charge of these women's meetings because of the fact there was International Women's Year in Mexico City and so forth. She was the one who was finalizing a report called To Form a More Perfect Union, Justice for American Women, which was published in June of 1976. And my battered cop to form a more perfect union, but as you can see, it's 40 years old. To form a more perfect union, justice for American women. Do you know where to form a more perfect union comes from? It's the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. It's the very first thing. To form a more perfect union, establish justice, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare. We had to memorize it when I was in eighth grade, which is a long, long time ago. And there you see the women's e equality sign, the peace dove with the equality feathers in the tail and the women's sign there with the circle with the cross at the neck. Now, about the Ohio women's meeting itself, it lasted from February to July 1977, and it was sort of late in getting started because in November 1976, Gerald Ford, who had followed Richard Nixon as president, Gerald Ford was defeated by Jimmy Carter, former governor of Georgia, and Jimmy Carter became the U.S. president. And so he was the one who was setting up a new commission on international women's here. They kept most of the people who'd been named before by either Nixon or Ford, but there were some new people. And Ohio, I think, was the last one that was actually set up, so we didn't begin meeting until February 18th of 1977, which didn't leave us much time to have a meeting in mid-June of uh, 1977. I drew on this essay and memoir because I was on the planning committee. It was called the Coordinating Committee for International Women's Year Ohio. The reason I was named to that, I believe, is because of this fuss that I had made in 1976 about Clarence Miller and the, thing, the, the fuss that women in Athens have made about it. So I was one of the people named. There were, I think, 50 people, um, first meeting, about 40 of these women showed up. There it mentions how President Carter himself named the Ohio Coordinating Committee. Mary E. Miller was the chair of the, she was elected at the first meeting on February 18th because she was an outstanding women's rights advocate. Uh, born in Portsmouth, but she was living in Columbus at the time. Uh, she was in in charge of a Women's of Ohio Volunteers for Employment Network. <laughs> Woven, that was called. We had here in Athens a member of the board of Woven, and her name was uh, Susan uh, Frampton. She was named the public relations or media chair of the Ohio IWY meeting because she worked for <coughs> Ohio University as in the office that sent out PR stuff for the university. She was quite a young woman. She was a recent graduate of Ohio University at the time. And by 77, I was 45. Susan Kreitz, so that's her maiden name. Frampton was her name then. And now she's Susan Price, and she lives in Washington, D.C. 
He was the second wife of Tom Price, who was once the editor of the OU Daily Post. And they set the location for the June meeting as the State Fairgrounds, and they named the time as June 11th and 12th. Wow! Worlds of Ohio went. We didn't even begin meeting till February 18th. But the first thing they did was to set the time and place and the name, Worlds of Ohio Women. And the idea was to set up what eventually became 17 worlds, health, uh, women on boards and commissions, uh, 17 different topics for the overall world. There were three workshops for each topic that were set up, and that meant, you know, contacting a lot of women around Ohio. I want to introduce one person in particular who is here today, Jan. Jan Griesinger was uh, active on, uh, in June. She was one of the people who was working at one of those workshops set up there by Dr. Carol Fout who had gone to Mexico City with her young daughter. She was a, a professor, Columbus Tech, I believe it was. All these uh, women uh, that first met on February 18th, uh, most of them didn't know each other. I mean, they were from different parts of the state, Toledo, Cleveland, uh, Cincinnati, Columbus, Youngstown, Dayton, and a few from South. East Ohio, like uh, Susan Frampton and me. And I can remember thinking, gosh, I wonder if all these women are going to be able to get along. They all have their own agendas, you know. And they're very strong women, and they, they want to press their ideas. Well, with uh, 17 worlds and 46 workshops, you can imagine that there was something for everyone. This uh, particular picture shows me that's me with the uh, large earrings on. I can't uh, uh, wear large earrings very well anymore because I have to wear hearing aids instead, okay? That's what happens when you're 84. But that's me uh, 40 years ago. Uh, and the lady in the middle is Mary E. Miller from Portsmouth, who was the chair of the coordinating committee for Ohio IWI. And the lady uh, on the other side, the black lady, is Anna Biggins of Youngstown. Um, this picture was taken with um, a coverage by uh, Pauline Wessa of the Columbus Dispatch of a luncheon that uh, we had in April, April 13th, 1977, attended by 20 women of representing 20 different Ohio women's groups. And then a few others that where there were a lot of women involved, like the uh, Teachers Association, which was headed by a man, so uh, he must have sent one of the, <laughs> perhaps his associate, you know, the, 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 the vice chair or whatever of the meeting. But that was uh, a luncheon on April uh, 13th, and this picture appeared in on um, April 14th. Good spread right across the whole top of the page there. Ohio IWI Committee calls June conference. Pauline Wessa wrote that, and she later wrote um, a follow-up to the conference. They were appointed, or they? No, the women's meetings were for the public, including anyone over 16. Now, you, you did have to pr provide some something that indicated you were an Ohioan. You didn't want anyone sneaking in from Indiana or Michigan or something like that, you know. <laughs> but, um, so they did ask for people's IDs, and they asked for a dollar registration. And we wound up, we were hoping for 6,000 people, 6,000, not necessarily women, because men could come too. It was a public meeting. Um, they had a dollar and could prove they were Ohioans. And there were some men there, but not too many. And if you were 16, you could come and be uh, a member of the meeting. And we had 2,800 people come 
although we had hoped for 6,000, but I must say that we were glad um, that only 2,800 people came because we had a hard time, you know, meeting it all of uh, uh, the whole question. But one of the major things the meetings were for was to elect delegates to go to Houston to the national meeting in November. What's the next slide? Okay, well this is the brochure we sent out in May of 1977. 150,000 brochures and they had something like 20,000 posters and they were sent to like every one of the libraries in Ohio, at least a thousand libraries and they were sent to things like the um, the people who, who uh, uh, helped out the uh, young young folks, not necessarily girls, both boys and girls, 4-H, you know, the 4-H people uh, were sent out to, to those, and it was sent out to the heads of women's organizations, like the ones who came to our luncheon in uh, April. So there were, and I have a pristine copy of that, which is 40 years old, over there. Um, and Anna, what's Anna's last name? Neil Letty. Okay, she was the one who set this up for me very kindly. She scanned all these things and set them up for me. So uh, this is the brochure that went out, and as you can see, there are at least three copies of the women's uh, symbol there. Uh, one on the side, which was the thing that could be addressed. As you can see, it's got the return address on it. The one in the <coughs> middle it gives the June 11th and 12th Ohio IWI meeting, Columbus, Ohio, and a couple of more of those women's symbols. And of course, you can tell the next thing is this a map how to get to the state fairgrounds because uh, people would be coming in from all over Ohio. So uh, this was our uh, brochure, which as I say was actually sent out in May. So, um, so as the time the drew near. So <laughs> different before email. So much yeah. yeah, that's so right. Much no email. Media. I mean, you know, <laughs> no email, no, no internet. Uh, one of the biggest troubles that we had at the meeting was that uh, there was an official slate proposed which had 56 names of people, including me. I was not elected, but it included me and it included Susan. Susan was elected. I'm glad to say someone went from Athens to Houston. Um, so we had this official slate, but then there were nominations from the floor. 160 names. Now, the official slate was all alphabetized, but in those days we didn't have any fast way to alphabetize 160 names. I mean, nowadays it would be a lot easier with the internet and so on. So, And personal computers. Of course, there were no personal computers in 1977 either. So, uh, Here was a bed sheet ballot with 56 on the official slate, 160 names. The voting was supposed to begin at 3.30 in the afternoon on June 11th. And they weren't able to start them. I mean, because they had to print these 160 names and the official slate on a big piece of paper, okay? <laughs> if you can imagine, you know, just choosing the delegates was a terrible, uh, problem. But let's see, what's next? Okay, uh, Worlds of Ohio Women. Uh, wow. Uh, this book is over there also, <coughs> and rather battered as you can tell. In fact, Anna very uh, nicely left off the, the battered parts of the, of the uh, back of the, you know, the back that, that holds the uh, paperback book together. Uh, but these are worlds of Ohio women now, and there's the women's center right, right in the center is the women's symbol, 
and there's a picture of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And I don't know if you can find out who those others are. I can't remember now. But this was the final official report, and uh, which came out in July 1977, you know, right away. And it listed all the people who had been elected, and it listed uh, in the back cover were all on the <coughs> coordinating committee, including me and Susan. So what about the actual worlds of Ohio women uh, on July 11th? What, one of the things that we discovered as time went on was, uh, and as May was rolling around, and the end of May was rolling around. Incidentally, I was the outreach chair, which meant that I was sending I was in contact with a lot of people around the state and helped um, them with, with the time frames that they, they had. There were some regional meetings. There were regional meetings in Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Toledo. And uh, one of the women who was on the coordinating committee, who was the only woman in the U.S. in the Ohio Senate, was Mary Jean Valaket of Toledo. And she spoke in, in uh, Marietta in uh, April. Well, one, but one of the things that we discovered was that there was a growing polarization. <laughs> you know, Marjorie Spruill speaks of this polarization. And now was very active, National Organization for Women. Incidentally, Susan Frampton was the, was the president of the Athens Now which was one of the reasons why she was named, in addition to her uh, you know, expertise, which was why she was named media chair for the whole, the whole group. So, um, but we began hearing, you know, now is organizing people and endorsing people and so on, and so is Eagle Forum, headed by uh, Schlafly, and uh, the local uh, Ohio chair being Ann Kitts Miller of, of Clarence Miller's hometown, Lancaster, and uh, the Right to Life people who were very uh, much organized in Cincinnati. They were the national, maybe they still are the headquarters of National Right to Life. Um, and they were getting their troops out, and that was the thing to do. And a lot of women were saying, hmm. I don't know whether I really want to go, you know. Maybe there'll be a big fight, you know, maybe it'd be very unpleasant. Uh, I don't really want to go to something like that. And so there really were uh, pretty polarized groups at the uh, women's meeting there. And uh, uh, like I say, there were 160 uh, who were nominated from the floor. When the final ta tally was um, taken, it was discovered that 45 members of either Ohio Right to Life or Ohio Eagle Forum had been elected as delegates. We had 56 total to go. 45 were uh, members of the conservative group. Now as it turned out, <laughs> It was not true nationally. There were about seven states that had uh, over, overwhelmingly um, conservative group uh, that went to Houston, including Ohio, of course. Ohio, Indiana, Arizona, I believe, you know, a, a, ver a variety. But um, that's the way things went. So they are all listed in the, the uh, report as well, you know, all the delegates who actually went to, to Houston. So in the meantime, we were having 46 workshops, huge long lines of people to vote, and like I say, only 2,800 came, quote, only 2,800, 1,900 voted. Not all the people who came actually voted because these huge long lines and probably there were people who said, ah, I can't face it. Or they were already involved in going to some of these interesting workshops, which were very interesting, you know. 
but some of them were very large, very large like uh, the one that discussed abortion, the one that discussed contraception, and they had a vote on resolution about contraception, and it was an interesting vote. It was a pretty close split. However, 150 women voted against the resolution for contraception. 141 women voted for it, okay? So this gives you an idea of some of the um, ways that the, the meeting was split. However, was it a vote on the right to contraception, or what was the... Yeah, I, I can't give you the exact wording, but the exact wording is also uh, included there because the National had sent out 15 resolutions, including one on um, con contraception, I believe. At least there was one on abortion. And I think there was one, I think maybe the overhaul, well actually there were, t there were two uh, workshops. They could set up workshops there. So there was one on reproductive rights, but there was one on pro-abortion and one on anti-abortion. In addition, that were set up right there, so um, it was it was one of the leading uh, resolutions that was, you know. Anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know we have um, eight minutes left. Yes. And um, if you wanted to kind of give us an overview on on some of the remaining slides, but then allow people to ask right. questions. Right. I I don't know that there are many more slides. We, we have some pictures. Uh, yeah, I think we just have a couple of pictures. Of yeah, this, this last slide, nobody can read it, of course, but this is a picture of something that's over there on the display table. It's called the WOW Wrap-Up. This is the, my final report that I send out to the people who had helped with outreach, you know, in which I mentioned that uh, Susan had was one of the delegates who was going, and uh, two others who helped who were actually either Right to Life or, uh, they were elected by Right to Life or Eagle Forum, were Mary Gigande of um, Dayton, who had, been, who had helped in the Dayton area, and Suzanne Hughes uh, from Northeast Ohio. And a couple of others that were interesting, Jane Campbell of Cleveland. Is there anyone here from Cleveland? Jane Campbell was once mayor of Cleveland. I mean, you know, in the 40 years since then, that she, she was mayor of, of Cleveland for a while. She was a liberal woman. Um, but this is the sort of thing that, that we have. And I'm not going to talk about the national women's meeting, basically, because I didn't experience it, okay? But uh, Susan Frampton brought me back a very nice t-shirt. And it was one of the ones that you saw earlier, those blue t-shirts that say women on the move and have the, the women's symbol on them and that are on the divided we stand book that's over there on the table. So um, that was of course not the end of the, it was only the beginning according to Spruill of, of this division but it really wasn't only the beginning because there were already those things like Title IX uh, the Equal Rights Amendment, which never got to 38 states, so it was never ratified, and uh, also the Roe v. Wade, ahead of the, the women's meetings. So there was plenty of division already before the women's meetings, and in some ways it's only gotten more. So if anyone has a question or comment, how many states short were we from equal rights? How many? Three. Thirty-eight is needed. We've got thirty-five. Let me pass these around. I don't see anyone with an actual brown bag. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's a very nice idea. So, uh, women, this is a, a very important message that was uh, written by a, a, a woman historian who served as the president of the American Historical Association. 
Well-behaved women seldom make history. And that's true whether you're a liberal or a conservative. Unless you're out there, you know, speaking up for what you want and what you believe, you probably won't make history. And I don't know, but I think I made a little history in 1977, and I've always been very strong for women's rights. Any other questions? Or it looks like Kat is going to take a picture of my t-shirt. Will you hold up the, the pillow again? I missed that. Will you hold the pillow up? Oh, sure. That's Here's the pillow. One. Did you get the pillow? Wait, let me see you, too. OK. How's no. that? <laughs> so I can see your face, too. Oh, oh my face, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can. <laughs> OK. Um, I think that that's a wonderful call to action for everyone who's here today, is that no matter what side of the aisle you're on, right. go out, speak up, make right. some noise. Um, and I invite all of you all to explore some of these wonderful artifacts that Lois has brought in for us. But for right now, let's just give her a wonderful round of applause. It's been a very interesting experience for me to relive those 40 years ago myself, getting this stuff together. I gave a copy of my, my uh, essay to the Ohio Animal Library. And um, Alexa, thanks so much for taping this. Alex is one of my colleagues at Channel 9, so she does a lot of taping. And Alexa, you got to get going. Right? <laughs> this is Lois Whaley again for Women Today and Yesterday. You had a chance there uh, to see lots of uh, wrinkles and gray hair and so forth up close which uh, I'm sporting now that I'm 84 years old. But I want to talk some more about the uh, international women's meetings that were held in 1977. I did certainly get up to, as uh, what you already saw, that uh, our meeting in Ohio was set for mid-June of 1977 and held at the Ohio fairgrounds in Columbus. And I was quite busy with the uh, coordinating committee for uh, our Ohio IWY meeting from uh, February 18th when the first meeting was held uh, through the publication of the, uh, the publication of the report which came out in July Shirley Timoneri really got going fast on that and uh, got it out for us. So uh, you saw that um, book cover of Worlds of Ohio Women for uh, 1977. During the meeting itself, one of the things I did was to um, help um, well, you know, we're, there was a large, large meeting of a thousand, more than a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred at, at times, uh, mostly women, um, ranging from age 16, which is how old you had to be in order to vote, to uh, however old the oldest person there was, and I'm sure there were a number of grandmothers and maybe even some great-grandmothers at that June 11th and 12th meeting in, in Columbus in 1977. One of the things I did was uh, serve as a teller um, to uh, look at the resolutions that we passed these were actually um, sort of a straw poll. It wasn't uh, anything terribly uh, official. However, we had been asked, and all the state meetings were asked, to consider certain resolutions um, about women's issues. And I found that an interesting um, opportunity 
It was Sunday morning, uh, June 12th, when I was uh, uh, helping to count those resolutions because that was the first thing we did, uh, basically, on uh, that Sunday morning was to have the straw poll of the resolutions. And um, one point that I would like to emphasize that uh, I noticed a typo in the report because the report says that there were 702 votes for the Equal Rights Amendment, uh, but that was a typo. It was actually 902 votes for the Equal Rights Amendment, but the Equal Rights Amendment was one of the resolutions that got the few, fewest votes, but it was still twice as many as the people who voted against uh, the Equal Rights Amendment. And uh, so we did have some, a few things that were a little problematic, but I think that's the only thing I ever noticed that I'm sure was an absolute um, error in the report, wonderfully drawn together by Shirley Timoneri uh, and published, like I say, in July of 1977 within a month of the uh, meetings actually held uh, in Columbus. The, um, interestingly enough, maybe it reflects the fact that there were a lot of older women who stayed for the second day of the meeting. The first day of the meeting on the 11th was the time that the delegates were elected to go to uh, Houston. And that was actually something that took a, quite a long time. They didn't actually have a final tally on that because of that huge bedsheet ballot that I mentioned that had some 220 plus names on it uh, because it took so long to, to count the 1,800 or 1,900 votes that were um, made at the meeting. But... Um, the uh, resolutions, as I say, were um, a different sort of thing, being a straw poll uh, themselves. And as it turned out, um, on the second day of the meeting, on the 12th of uh, June, a Sunday morning, um, we had these resolutions. And the number one resolution in terms of the number of votes in favor which was about 1,150, was for the older woman resolution, which is why I say it may be that the grandmothers and uh, even great-grandmothers were the ones who hung around for the second day of the meeting, whereas it was on the first day that the delegates were elected that were so uh, overwhelmingly uh, right to life or Eagle Forum uh, people. It was uh, quite an interesting meeting, too. In fact, we even had um, um, movies playing right next door at the Ohio Historical Society uh, during both uh, the afternoon and, uh, of uh, June 11th and the morning of June 12th. So, and we had live uh, music, one of the people who um, performed live music was Nancy Beebe of Athens, uh, who was singing some songs by uh, a, a, a um, composer from Athens itself. So uh, that was only part of the uh, live performances that were held the evening of June 11th as part of the Ohio Women's Meeting. Now, after the meeting itself was uh, finished, immediately Mary E. Miller, who was the uh, chair of the meeting, had the um, ballots all boxed up and sent away by the Brinks trucks and stored, uh, you know, in safely stored in case anyone should question the outcome of the election. 
um, it was actually questioned by the liberals who had basically lost since essentially they only had 11 of the 56 votes and the other 45 had been uh, women elected from the conservative uh, groups that were there, particularly Eagle Forum and Ride to Life. I don't know that they ever had to uh, take out those ballots and, and count them again, but um, there was a lawsuit brought by the uh, liberal women, which was uh, just dismissed on the eve of the meeting in Houston in, um, be just before Thanksgiving of 1977. So it was uh, quite a, um, a time when there was that division that you saw with the, the book, Divided We Stand by Marjorie Spruill, which showed at the top the um, women who got to Houston, uh, including the people who had brought the, well, they brought the last mile of the torch from Seneca Falls, and at the bottom, the divided we stand. Um, what you're seeing right now is, is actually the report of the Houston meeting. It's called The Spirit of Houston, that was published in 1978 as a report of the uh, meeting in Houston. But um, what I was just referring to is what you saw in uh, what was taped by Alexa at the Women's Center, namely the book by Marjorie Spruill called Divided We Stand, a contrasting women's rights with family values, uh, which has, if anything, just gotten deeper and more contentious uh, since 1977. Now, as a woman, woman who is very much in favor of women's rights, I also think that, um, certainly I personally am very much in favor of family values, but the family values which I support include women's rights among them, and family rights to decide, for instance, on the size of families by using contraception, and in some cases, even abortion, to uh, determine the families that women and their uh, spouses and partners have, uh, that they have a choice of um, limiting their families if they so decide. Well, some other interesting things happened during the summer. Um, certainly in July, there were discussions, especially in the U.S. Senate, led by Senator Helms, a conservative senator, um, once again complaining by then, the meetings had all been held. They were all held in 56 of them, 50 states, six state territorial meetings uh, were held by the end of July uh, 1977. And Helms was once again uh, objecting to the fact that there was this upcoming meeting in Houston in November. And he was, uh, any comments that were made about the Ohio meeting were answered by Mary E. Miller. It was uh, the case that um, Mrs. Miller was not elected a delegate to go to Houston, but she was named as an at-large delegate um, by President Carter, I believe. And uh, she uh, was a person who only passed away, I believe it was in um, 2010, and she was already then over 100 years old, uh, Mary E. Miller Young, because after her husband's death, uh, her first husband's death, she married a Mr. Young, and later moved from Ohio to Missouri, where I had uh, an opportunity to talk to her 
in uh, 2007 when I was preparing my essay and memoir that I have talked about before. So um, the meeting itself in Houston, very interesting, as I mentioned, as Susan Frampton Price was there and uh, brought me back one of those nice blue t-shirts. <laughs> But I can't locate it. I don't believe it actually wore out, although I did receive it, uh, as you might imagine, in 1977, 40 years ago. Now, <clears throat> I want to mention another uh, interesting thing that I did in the summer of 1977 as a follow-up to the Ohio meeting, and that was to hold a program held here in Athens, Ohio in August, and that was uh, the Pride and Prejudice, a humanistic preliminary to the National Women's Conference held here, and we um, met and discussed. There were about 50 participants, including three of the women who actually were going to Houston and a number of other women, but we were discussing important women's books from uh, <laughs> women like Medea who uh, uh, killed her children in order to punish her, her husband who had deserted her for another woman. That is one of the famous stories from uh, classical antiquity, as well as um, much more important, perhaps today, uh, women's books that were discussed at my preliminary conference there. So that was uh, something I did at the end of August in 1977, and it was really a great conference, Women's Place. Pride and Prejudice, and Mary Ann Wells, a local um, artist at the time, presented her one-woman show of Pride and Prejudice, and uh, we had a picnic, we had a great time, uh, in addition to making discussions, having wonderful discussions of the women's books that were a part of that conference. This is Lois Whaley for women today and yesterday.